Hey there, fellow wacky dudes. Hello again. Well, ah, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Dr. Doodle Q Basic Asylum. Hi. How's it going? Uh, welcome back. All right, anyways, uh, now I guess it's what, third week in November now, so Turkey Day coming up. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And so every give thanks to everybody. And uh, well, one thing we can go all give thanks for is this time around, we got hopefully a relatively short uh, video. So, whew, thank goodness. But yeah, we'll try to throw quicker in here and get in. This is episode. 5, 10, 15, 16. Yeah, 16. Our little channel has turned sweet 16. Isn't she beautiful? Episode 16, so this time around we're doing Follow the Bouncing Bullocks. And um, yeah, hop in here. Let's take a look what we got going on. Come on. Right now, well, let's see. We got uh, QBA 16. We are Bouncy Bullocks. Woohoo! Now, up to this point, uh, my long-suffering viewers can tell you, uh, we have... Uh, just bounce stuff around the screen and everything, but so far uh, only in straight lines. And well, this is the video where we say straight lines. Pfft, who needs them? We're going. We, we, we got no straight lines. Watch out! Watch this. You'll see what happens here. Run. Start. Look at there. A couple bollocks bouncing around the screen there, and uh, go purple and brown. And now, uh, if you notice, one's moving a little faster. The other one bounces a bit higher. Well, these are just the uh, parameters we can set as we go and just as we like. Uh, but that's the idea. Instead of straight lines, they're bouncing, and uh, maybe we can just. Uh, well, you can see right there, it's a nice curve, uh, sine waves, all that kind of stuff. But Well, anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk about that, and as soon as it's finished up here, once it gets to the where it's no, not bouncing anymore, there we go, we're done. So that's it. Instead of, like, straight lines, uh, the, uh, enemies running around straight lines, uh, these are, maybe you, could, you had a cliff here, and you got an enemy throwing uh, bombs down on you, they bounce around, or, or you're throwing bombs up at them, whatever, and then things... Things don't always go in a straight line. Uh, you've probably seen the game where you, uh, what is it, uh, uh, cannon fodder, I think they call it, or, or something like that, where you shoot your, your ammo, and they, uh, well, we'll find out how to do that in this video. Hang on one sec. Okay, so, QBA 16, Bouncy Bollocks, Copy Left 2022, Dr. Doodle. Well, it's pretty pretty common stuff, Things will, except for a few things. We've uh, done pretty much all of this before. Screen 13, that just sets in graphics mode. We've seen this many times. Now, window screen, we'll ignore that for a moment. Uh, we'll come back to that one, but it's, it's whew, that's a game changer right there. So, circle and dim, and what we're doing, we're drawing the circle. Excuse me, that's the yellow circle there. Brown, excuse me. Draw the brow ball. We dim the array to hold ball one. Clear the screen. Now we draw the purple ball, ball two. Dim the array for ball two. Clear the screen. Uh, now we set a constant. Constant is pi. Now I'm, I'm sure you've heard of pi. If not, uh, I did talk about that a little bit in uh, another video. But pi is, you'll see this number, uh, 3.14159. And, and it goes on forever. Billions of, of digits. Basically what pi is, it is the ratio of the circ yeah, the circumference of a circle to its diameter. In other words, if your diameter of your circle is 1, then your circumference is pi, 3.14159. If the circumference is 2, then the diameter is twice that, or 3.28, 6.28, blah, blah. Oh, it's just a, a constant we use for measuring circles and things like that. So theta pi, okay, theta equals pi. Now theta is the angle, so we're going to start out with pi, 3.14159, and then angle change, obviously change of the angle, uh, 0 0.01, so each time through the loop we change by 0 0.01, which is a little more than, yeah, a little less than one degree actually, but we'll mess with that and see what's going on. Now x max, that's the maximum x position over here to the right. Uh, height is a uh, height of one, excuse me, the first ball is 150. Height of two is 250. So they start at the same height. But if you notice, uh, well, X1, X2, those are uh, the X is the location where they are, both the ball one, ball two. H1, H2, that's uh, the how far they move the horizontal. Now, if you notice, look here, we got one and 0.7. That's why the first ball is a little faster than, than the second ball because this is only 0.7. Now, bounce, bounce one, that's three, and bounce two is, is two, uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.02. So the first ball bounces fast, higher, excuse me, but it moves a little slower. In any case, there's our parameters. Now we go to the main program. Let's scroll down here. Come on. All right, main program. We start out, we got our loop. Is in many, many programs. This is the main loop where it goes and does and does and does. Loop until the length of in key. It's the same thing as loop while in key is nothing, just a different wording. And once you hit a key, you clear the screen, system, it's over. Now, 
if theta is less than zero or theta is greater than pi. In other words, if the angle is less than zero or greater than pi, then angle change equals angle change times negative one. Kind of like if the max is, is more than that, then we minus one, minus one, up and down. We've seen those in other videos. And then of course, we play a sound, what's it, uh, 440, two point two tenths of a second and in other words when this when this changes direction it, it's it's hitting the ground so now it needs to change direction and it, it bounces off the bottom bounce 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 so theta equals theta plus change angle change and we saw up here angle change was uh, 0 .00, 0 0.01 which is again just about one degree but again, here is where we, if it hits, if it comes down too far, then it's either zero or it's pi, and we change the angle to negative one. So first it's going positive one, then negative one, then positive one. You'll see what I'm talking about here. So we've decided, we sorted out what theta is going to be. Now we call go sub ball one, go sub ball two. It should be no big surprise. It just goes to subroutines that, that animate the balls. And if height of height one plus height two, that's the height of both balls, how high they are, if they equal zero, then system. In other words, if they're no longer bouncing, then just end the program. We don't want to go just going back and forth, back and forth forever. Now delay for for delay is one to fifty. Next delay, again, pretty co common stuff. Just loop back and forth, slow it down a bit. Loop until land in key until the key is pressed. Clear screen and system. So we go to the subroutines. Ball one, if x1 is less than three or x1 more than x max. In other words, if it's gone too far that way, too far this way. Then h1 equals h1 times negative. We've seen all of this in, in so many other videos uh, and programs. Now height equals height one minus bounce one. If height is less than zero, then height equals height one equals zero. What's happening there? Well, the height that's how it's going to how high it's going to bounce. And the bounce is actually the height is where it is in. Uh, yeah, that's that's where. Hmm, how do I put this? The height is how much it's going to change in y, or delta y, and then we subtract bounce once. This is why every time it bounces, it loses a little bit. Just a little less, a little less, a little less, a little less, a little less. But if height 1 is less than 0, because it keeps subtracting, and if it gets less than 0, then height is, it can't go, well, if it goes below 0, it's going underground. We can't have that. We'll never see it. So we just set it to 0 if, if that happens. Now, x1 equals x1 plus h1 just moves it back and forth y equals 150 which is uh yeah it's the bottom here minus sine theta times height what what is all of this sine theta we'll talk about that a little bit later but sine is is the uh, you've heard of trigonology well that's a trigonology function right there sine theta sine of the angle times height one and then put x1 y1 ball one p set so it just all we're doing here is we're testing are we at the max left max right if so we just change direction now we take our height height one equals height minus bounce so this is why it bounces a little less every time if height is less than one or less than zero excuse me then height one equals zero can't go well that's our limit can't go below zero we put our calculate our new x position a new y position and put the ball there well yeah put x and y ball one p set now now we come down here Return that's the end of that routine, and then of course we go to the ball, uh, go sub two ball two. That's the second ball, the the purple one. Same thing, uh, virtually identical. Set it height one, it's height two. X one is X two. Uh, H one is H two, etc. But it's exactly the same thing. We're subtracting sine theta and height two, and it just so back to the begin to the main program here. We've got do. Beginning of the loop, if theta is, is uh, less than zero or greater than pi, then angle change is times negative one, so it goes the other direction. And theta equals theta plus angle change, so it's going up and down. Uh, goes to ball one, goes to ball two. They put the balls on screen where they need to be. And if height one plus height two equals that, in other words, if height one is zero and height two is zero, then they've stopped bouncing. They're just rolling around the bottom. If they equal zero, then system. Just end the program. We delay it, and then we loop while that there's no key, clear screen, and system. The simple as that. We'll run this again. Now. Say yes. So what's happening? Of course, the x and positions there going back and forth. But we got uh, height is changing by sine, and it gets a little bit less each time. 
And there you see, they're, they're dying. Well, you've seen this before. They just, they roll around on screen. Uh, purple's done, it's just rolling around, but the brown one is still bouncing a bit. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Come on, die already. We ain't got all night. Boom, there we go, we're done. The whole H1, it, horizontal, like we've seen in other videos. H1, We in fact, we can put this up. Let's put this up to two and see what happens. Should be no big surprise. You're just gonna, well, you, we'll see here. Hang on, run. Yeah, there we go, of course, now. The purple one, you can see it's moving back and forth much faster than it was because now instead of one pixel over each time, it's moving two pixels over each time. What happens if we change this now to, say, three or two and a half? Try two and a half. Boom, boom. And run. Wait a minute, what's happening here? Well, what's happening is is the purple ball is moving too far so that you see the yellow uh, yellow circle around the ball itself. Well, that's actually... It's you want to move no more than two pixels at once, otherwise the, the remains of the image is left on screen. It's not erasing itself. So, because there's actually, if you look, see that the black around that, that image there, it's not quite circular, it's square. Well, that black around it is what erases all this gibberish when it's moving. But if it moves too far, some of the image is left and you get this nonsense. Anyway, just don't go over two and you're good. Now, we'll put this back to two. And if you notice here, points, point 0.7, well, actually, put it to 1. I like 1 there. And if you notice here, point 0.7, this, now, this doesn't mean it's moving 7 tenths of a pixel each time. Because it can only go pixel 1, or column 1, or column 2, column 3, column 4. It can't go column 1.7, 3.7. All that means is that it, it chops that out. See, point 0.7 here will be 0. So it's that's the far right, far left here. And next time around, it'll be 1.4, so that's 1. It just chops off the the, the uh, fractional part. In other words, this is adding slower than this is because instead of 1, it's only part of 1, if that makes any sense. That's why it moves back and forth because it moves by less each time. And if it's not a full pixel over, then it just stays that same column and then goes over. Okay, that should be confusing as hell, but anyway, that's how that works. Now, let me just uh, bring up another piece of code here. This should clear things up a little bit. Hang on one second. All right, here we have sign demo dot base, and this I won't go into the guts of this one because it's it's very similar to the program. It's the same concepts, but we'll run this now. Boop. Let's see what we got here. Well, if you notice, we got this uh, this little well, I guess like a radar screen almost, a little wiper going around in circles, and. Yeah, going around circles. And you know this this line right here that's wherever this point on the circle is, it just follows it along. This is actually the sign function, the trigonology or uh, trigonometry. If this is the function called sign, where it takes whatever angle you're working with, multiplies it by some fraction of the, the, the diameter, circle, circumference, excuse me, and look, look down here, for example, sine of theta of this, this angle here, if you notice, it's, it goes up to, well, it should be from positive 1 to negative 1 here. It never gets quite there, so it's like all the way up here to maximum point 99999, then 0 here on the horizontal, then negative point 99999, and then back up to 0, and then positive 99. All it's doing is it's, well, you can see it up and down. The sine function, it makes, as the angle goes up, the sine goes to this point or that point because as, you, as you're rotating it you're going up but eventually you hit the top you start coming down you're like a uh, well a ferris wheel if you want to look at it that way now what is this all what's the big whoop about this what if well what if we had like a pencil or something that could just could stay right along with this line what would that look like well it looked like this see there's our pencil and it's following the line up and down and here we go. Notice this pattern that's drawing out on screen. In a moment, it should come around again. Okay. Now, you may have heard the term sine wave in the past. Well, that is a sine wave. That's what it means. Uh, this, the sine function in trigonometry, it basically, it's a ratio of the height uh, the vertical to horizontal, x-axis to y-axis. And for every angle, the, the ratio was the same. This is why we get this constant number with each angle is changing, but 
every angle is going to give you the same value as it changes the angle the the sign changes so here we got a positive uh sign yeah positive the angle is going up actually in the in Cartesian this would be negative because it's uh, 360 and then 180 90 zero so it's going down as we as we uh, speak creating this sine wave pattern on on the screen well now what happens hang on for a sec what if we change direction say now now it's positive oh the angles going back up but if we change angle again and now it's going a negative again and we get to zero boop right back up now we're coming up that's half pi there up on pi and it changed direction again hey does this look kind of familiar look like anything we've just seen yeah the bollocks pro program that's all it is we've got what we're doing is manipulating the angle up and down up and down between zero and pi which pi again is 3.14 blah 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 uh, and as we do so we take the ratio of the x core x uh, axis x axis to the y axis we use those numbers to calculate the vertical position and there you go that's what we see on screen that is how the bouncing ball program works and if you've seen I'm sure you well there's the cannon program I mentioned earlier where you shoot the cannonball and try to hit your enemy and set the angle set the velocity that's all it is but now as I mentioned this is the sine wave function have you heard of cosine well I'll show you cosine hang on there's cosine instead of the vertical axis we're now checking the horizontal axis so the ratio of y to x when you're moving up and down that's the sine wave and the cosine moves back and forth this is why uh, they go around in a circle because they're they're changing back and forth and if you notice they're kind of out of phase with one, one another in time in other words when whoop, back down here when the sine function is the minimum, the cosine is, is zero. And when the cosine is zero, the sine function is either minimum or maximum. See? So that's, this is going up and then down and then up. Now here, the cosine is minimum here, so it's going up and starts going down but if you notice they're they're different timings so while this is the maximum or minimum the, the sine is maximum or minimum the cosine is zero likewise when the cosine is zero is maximum or minimum cosine is maximum here minimum there and when that happens sine is zero so they're the same, if you looked at the cosine, it would look just like this. It's just shifted over 90 degrees, so not quite, it's, the timing's a little off. But anyway, we're done with this here, we'll kill that. That is the meaning of the sine function. If you look here, yes, cosine, that's x equals 100 plus cosine z. See, the z is changing, so the cosine, cosine will give you a number between positive 1 and negative 1, and we multiply by 80, otherwise we're just moving this far on screen, but we need to see something, so we multiply by 80, and sine will also give you a number between positive 1 and negative 1, multiply by 80 again to make it, so the sine part here at the y is multiplied by added to sine yes yeah, sine is added on there and it changes with the, the angle that's what makes it move up and down and just like our balls that's what makes them move up and down so we'll go back to uh, bouncy ball function uh, program go back to qba 16 again here we bring this up uh, and now qba 16 run this again once again this is just the sine function it starts moving up and it hits a maximum and then the cut starts coming almost like a pendulum instead of just abruptly changing it gets to the maximum stops and slows down stops and then comes back down slows down stops just like that that is the sine function well actually this would be cosine i guess that would be sine but if we look here we've got our parameter set up here and all the theta angle theta is pi so it starts out 3.14159 angle of change is either positive zero one or negative zero one again about one degree or one degree this way one degree that way every time we let's see here let's go down here 
if a, theta is less than zero, if it's going to come around to zero, or if theta is more than pi, it's going to come back, start going down the other way. Then change angles, change angle times negative one. That makes it from positive to negative, so it starts going the other direction, bounces back and forth. Instead of bouncing back and forth in a straight line, we're multiplying by, or adding to sine right here, where's the sine? Uh, so, yeah, sine, which is what makes it curve like that, because sine does not just, it's a, this acceleration changes over time, I guess I should say. So, when we start the, the main program, if theta is less than zero or greater than one, that means it's it's gone, to the, the horizon, I guess, basically. Then we change and we start going the other way around and we play the sound because they're bouncing. Boop, 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 bounce, bounce. Theta equals theta plus angle change. So first it's positive 0 0.001, starts going this way. Negative 0 0.01 comes this way. We go some ball one, ball two. Those just place the balls on screen according to what theta is. If height plus one, yeah, I'm sorry. If height one plus height two is less than equal zero, then system. If they're both stop bouncing, there's rolling back and forth. We don't want to sit there all day watching that, so we end the program. But for delay one to fifteen, next delay. Again, self-explanatory. Loop until loop until len. So in key that if you don't print, if you don't press any keys, in key has a length of well, not even zero. It's nothing. So you loop until it gets some length when you press a key. Then we clear the screen and system and the program and go down to subroutines here uh, Subroutines ball one ball two again. They're identical except for that x1 where x2 height one becomes height two uh, H1 is H2, but that same idea If x1 is less than three or x1 is greater than x max Then we just move this take care of the horizontal horizontal moving back and forth and of course times negative one to change again We've seen all this Height one equals height one minus bounce one. So in other words, if height is less than zero, then height one equals zero. And look, well, we'll take a look here. X one, X one equals X one plus H one. So we're calculating our new horizontal position. Y equals 150 minus sine of theta times height one. So in other words, when eventually height one will become zero. So sine theta times height one is zero. That means H1 is going to stay at 150, or I'm sorry, Y will stay at 150. The sign is, can change all at once. It's always going to be zero because height one equals zero. Now, if that was even one, for example, you'd see it just bouncing a little tight, well, a little bit off the screen. But we start with a bounce of, what's bounce one? Uh, okay, 0 0.03 and then 0 0.02 for bounce two. And yeah, so that's, oh, the height is what, like our height, mm, where's the height? Mm, yeah, 150 and 150. Now, one thing I, I mentioned earlier I didn't really touch on is what is this 150 deal? Because in Cartesian graphics, if, if we look at uh, at x, x axis, horizontal axis, it goes positive this way, negative that way. Now, up and down is typically called the y axis, and it goes positive this way, negative that way. But what do we know about QBasic? In QBasic, in most computer languages, mm -mm, not positive, that's positive. This is negative. So the numbers go up as you go down. The numbers go down as you go up. Now that's kind of odd. That's, that's why we need to, instead of adding, notice here, we are subtracting sign because we want to go the opposite direction because the screen is set up for the opposite direction. But now notice this window screen. I'll run this here quick. You'll see how this works. It starts at 150 and goes up and then back down and like that. Now what happens if I just uh, re remark out this, this screen, this line here to make it inactive? What happens? A whole lot of nothing. It works just like it did before because at the moment this command all it does is it creates a graphic screen the size of the screen. It, there's nothing. But notice, screen, in other words, is relative to the screen. What does that mean? Well, let's take screen out and see what happens. Now let's run this. Okay, what's going on here? We're upside down all of a sudden. This is, in this case, remember I mentioned where in QBasic, most programming language, it goes positive down this way. Now it goes positive up. Just like a Cartesian X and Y, your typical uh, trigonomic trig trigonology functions where X is, is 
positive this way, negative that way. Y is now positive this way, negative that way, as it should be, really. But I don't know why computers do, but they make it positive that way, negative that way. Well, with this command, with the window command, we can put in screen. That makes it relative to the screen. So in other words, it's just you can create a, a screen. In fact, if you wanted to make half the screen, well, let's try this. Let's let's put the screen. Uh, put this instead of 319. We'll make it 119. It probably won't work properly, but let's just um, 99. See what happens. I haven't actually tried this yet. We'll see what happens. Illegal function call, right? Because it's trying to put it too far over or too far down, as I figured. But we'll make this 319 again. And 199. Then there you have it. Run start. We've got our X going positive and negative, positive and negative, while Y goes positive and negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. In reality, it should be the other way around. It should be positive, negative, but uh, QBasic programming languages screen I guess it has to do with the hardware but they count this as zero zero where this should be zero zero this should be zero what uh, 200 uh, zero one ten fifty to 100 but in computer lingo this is zero zero so that's why we have to subtract sign subtract well we don't have to really subtract uh, uh, cosine because that's horizontal there's no difference horizontally but again the window if you make it a uh, reference to the screen then it is that goes positive and negative but in reality we pull this out and now it will be as it should be where it goes positive and negative <laughs> I kind of like this it looks like like bobber is being pushed underwater and bouncing back to the surface bloop, bloop. Bloop. But that's the whole thing right there. We can use the, the command as is. Uh, we can mark, mark it out and it works just fine without because we are compensating for the fact that that is now negative and that's positive. But if we wanted to, if we wanted to be more accurate, we would put in the window command. And we'll talk more about the window command in another program. I haven't really messed with that too much. But we do this and once again, it is now going what... Uh, negative positive and negative as it should and that's why it looks upside down because instead of adding sign we're subtracting which in reality we should add so that about does it for this program and all in all what is it uh, well here's an interesting thing i don't know if i mentioned this before but look here uh we're moving that cursor up and down over here if you notice can you see down let me just these numbers right yeah right here zero one so we're in row one column one and if we go down the two three four five six that's row 45 right there so just 45 lines of code is all this, this program is well actually 40 43 lines of code but these numbers are handy because you can you can move your cursor anywhere on screen and where was I where was I last oh yeah 34 23 so I'm 34 pixels over 23 lines down or vice versa but there you have it and now this that should be well uh, <laughs> I, I this is an actually actually a quite a, a simple program and just things bounce around the screen but hopefully you can see the uh, possibilities here or the potential but trust me, we'll get into some more uh, some more fun use of sine and cosine to program bouncy things or curves or who knows what. And there you go. But this, oh, good things coming up, so just stick around. And uh, well, at the moment now, I guess at this point we need to do, before we go, we need to do superiors. And then we'll come back for a wrap up. And that should do it. Okay, hang on. We'll bring up superiors. Who's, who's the superior this time? One second. Superiors! superiors. All right, now in this superior segment, we'll be looking at a fellow a gentleman calls himself the Eight Bit Guy, and this guy he's cool. He's so interesting, and and oh, he he's not as technical as far as computer code as as that goes. But uh, well, what, one of the things he does is he'll find old like here's we got an old uh, well at the computer festival. 
he's got old vintage hardware and such. He's big on Commodores and uh, Amigas and things like that. All these old computers, how they worked, and uh, Attack of the Petsky Robots. That sounds fun. But uh, uh, here's the talking clocks of the 1980s. Uh, the Mini Mini Amiga 500 has arrived. This guy. I believe his name is Doug. I could be mistaken, but he again, he'll he one of the things he'll do is to uh, restore a lot of this vintage equipment. Like he'll he'll tear it down apart, put in new hard drives, new uh, new uh, video cards, things like that. And in fact, the the, the hardware, the the cases and such, he'll pull the screens out. He has what's it? He has a process he calls retro brighting, where he puts some chemicals, just dish soap, things like that, lays them out in the sun to bleach, and then, I mean, <laughs> by the time, he's, he's taking these old things all, oh, they're stained with cigarette smoke, you name it, and by the time he's done, it looks like a brand new machine, but of course, it's vintage 80s, even some of the 70s equipment, but uh, what's this, landfill monitor restoration, yeah, there you are, there's a restoration right there, here's some stuff he found in the landfill, uh, what happened to America's electronics Electronics stores like uh, Fry's and and the uh, Circuit City, all those places. Well, he is again. It, there's his. He covers so many diverse topics, but they're all so interesting, fascinating. Uh, mostly vintage hardware and such, but uh, a little bit about software, how to restore things. Uh, the, the oh, where is this? Nope, that's, here's a rare rare Commodore system found in an electronics recycler. Uh, well, another thing he does is he'll take like two older systems, a, a Commodore, maybe an Amiga, or even a, 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 what's the Tandy, Radio Shack Tandy, and he'll compare the two or three different systems, which is better, which, why, which had, had better memory, better graphics, what have you. But 8-bit guy, he, I can, I don't know what, I, I just... Don't bother uh, looking for a particular topic. I just watch his next video, and it's, he's always talking about something interesting and, and really uh, <laughs> entertaining. What do we got here? Vintage uh, Heroid Robot. Ooh, okay, well, so he's doing robots now. But it's just the 8-bit guy, wow. If you're into vintage hardware, vintage software at all, you, you need to check out the 8-bit guy. It's all I can say. He's, he's such a fascinating guy and knows what he's talking about. It really fills a niche that uh, I don't think many other people do. So if you have some time, check out the 8-bit eight guy. Oh, I can't recommend him, recommend him highly enough. He's uh, he's a real, real, he's a scholar. He knows what he's talking about. So check out the 8-bit guy, and you will be happy, and you're welcome. Well, speaking of thanks, giving thanks, Thanksgiving. Give thanks to the 8-bit guy for all these great videos because, boy, there's so much great entertainment and, and in um, education knowledge and stuff on this. Ooh, look at that one. That's kind of cool. So uh, now back to the video. We'll wrap this pig up, and uh, I guess leave it to your own devices. So, um, yeah, here we go. Hang on. All right, well, gang, that should just about do it for this episode. <laughs> and if this one feels a little slapped together, hey, why should it be any different from the rest? But, uh, yeah, hopefully I, I've described or explained a bit about sine and cosine. All your there's, if, you, if you need to help with your trig, YouTube, plenty of trig videos and everything else. Just look trigonometry, and they'll, they'll explain that to you. But essentially it's the ratio of the vertical to the horizontal position, whatever angle you've got, it, the, the ratio will be the same, regardless how big the actual tri triangle or angle is. So it uses the, the sine function, well, when you move in circular or curves or what have you, instead of straight lines, you got to use the sine or cosine. Well, tangent will work, but <laughs> that you can talk about tangent another day. But the sine, it, that's what gives you this nice flowing curve, nice smooth, almost like a pendulum or, or a swing, a uh, playground swing. Cosine is the same, but that's horizontal where sine is vertical. Uh, you're probably wondering, what is this idiot talking about? But just rewatch the video if you have your confusion. Or, as always, you know, down there in the comments, say, look, dummy, what the hell are you talking about? I don't understand you. But uh, as always, Thank you for watching. If you have, have yourselves a great uh, gives thanking. Gives thanking. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy your holidays. Eat lots. Hey, make a pig of yourself on the turkey, all right? Because I intend to. Trust me. Well, that's going to do it. So uh, we're signing off now. And as always, hasta la pizza, baby. Actually, I guess it should be hasta la turkey. Anyway.